When a lot of you think of Ray William Johnson, you probably think of this. What's happening for him? But for me, when I think of Ray William Johnson, I think of this. You don't deserve another chance. <laughs> Is this I'm not even wearing any. What's up, OGs? Welcome to this retro exclusive. I'm your host, Aaron with 1A. And today we're gonna to talk about an old friend of mine and a former king of YouTube, Ray William Johnson. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Now Ray William Johnson was once the number one most subscribed person on all of YouTube and he had a show called Equals Three and it was once the number one most watched show on the entire internet. Now before all of this came into fruition, he had a lesser known show called the Capitol Hill Gangsta. Now what exactly is the Capitol Hill Gangsta and how did I become friends with Ray William Johnson? Well in order to find out, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning. So will you join me in this journey through time? Because we're gonna go way back, all the way back to the year 2008. Welcome to the year 2008, a year that saw the Boston Celtics Big 3 win the NBA championship, a year that Super Smash Bros. Brawl made its video game debut, and a year in which Barack Obama was elected as the 44th President of the United States of America. And speaking of the world of politics, it was also a time where political buff and a student from Oklahoma by the name of Ray William Johnson started his humble beginnings as a YouTuber and uploaded his first video on May 25th, 2008. It was on this day that a legend was born. Many people actually believe that Ray started uploading videos to his channel on April of 2009, but I'm here to set the record straight and tell you that's not true. I was there. Ray William Johnson's first video was called John McCain May Have Herpes, and it was the first in a series of videos called the Capitol Hill Gangsta. For those who don't know what the Capitol Hill means, the Capitol Hill is a large and historical residential district in Washington, D.C. When someone goes into politics, they often refer to themselves as going to work at the Capitol Hill. The Capitol Hill Gangsta Show was basically a political show in which Ray reviewed and talked about current events happening in the everyday world, mixed in with a lot of funny jokes and comedy in the most modern day gangsta style possible. The show can be compared to the Colbert Report with Stephen Colbert or the Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Ray would often dress in a suit to match the same look as well. It's Saturday, May 31st, 2008, and there's really only one thing ago. I want to talk about today. And that is Rachel Ray's ties to Palestinian yeah, terrorists. Is. For yeah, those of right. you who don't know, Rachel Ray is a cooking connoisseur who also hosts a couple of TV shows. Which I don't watch. Recently, Ms. Ray was featured in an ad for Dunkin' Donuts. You know, Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. Now, in the ad, she's no wearing shit. a black and white checkered scarf. This scarf happens yeah. to resemble a kafia. What is a kafia? Now, a kafia is a traditional headdress worn by Palestinian Muslim men. Now, because Rachel Ray happens to be wearing a scarf that looks like a kafia, some douchebag conservative blogger got it in her head that Rachel Ray now supports Palestinian terrorism. Oh, for Christ's sakes, this is an early example of cancel culture. Now, Prove I can it. understand the problem if she were, say, oh, I don't know, a Muslim man from Palestine. Palestine, but she's not. Yeah, she's Sicilian and French. In fact, Rachel Ray is the whitest woman on TV right now. She's white. I mean, my God. I mean, I'm no big fan of Rachel Ray, but she's the last thing. She's hardly a fucking terrorist. Speaking of how Ray looks, what nationality is this guy anyway? That's a question he got all the time. And we'll have more info on that later in the video. Back to politics, Ray was no stranger to it at all. At the time of his early YouTube days, Ray was living in New York City where he studied and majored in history at the Columbia University with plans on eventually earning a law degree after completing his studies. This made Ray very knowledgeable about the topics he discussed in his videos. In fact, if you ever have a conversation with Ray in regards to history or politics, he will show you just how passionate he is about the subject. Ray's show eventually earned him a great following and subscriber base as he boldly offered his personal knowledge and humorous approach to a lot of sensitive topics that most people are afraid to discuss at all. So what if Americans eventually have a nice brown pigmentation to their skin? America thrives on diversity. If it weren't for minority diversity, American culture would lack plenty of wonderful things. Hip-hop music, Chinese food, and come on, 
Where would the United States be had the African Americans not introduced gangster rap? Bitches. Another unique element to his videos is that he didn't hold back and he was pretty transparent that he was going to look at issues from all different sides and political viewpoints, which is something that is incredibly rare and almost non-existent in today's politics. And I don't know if Dunkin' Donuts is aware, but Muslim doesn't necessarily equal terrorist. Kind of like Republican doesn't necessarily equal white trash. And liberal doesn't necessarily equal homosexual. Sorry, bad example. These political discussions were the origins of Ray's I Approve This Message, and it's how the slogan was born. And I approve this message. It was also during this time that Ray's show slowly evolved over time as they experimented with different ideas. This is when he first got the idea for people to start asking questions through his inbox. Just send in your questions this week in the form of a personal message. Which later evolved into the common question of the day. So your question is this, Batman or Spider-Man. Which later evolved into the video response question of the day. We stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Basically, the Capitol Hill gangster was the grandfather to Equals 3, as the Capitol Hill gangsters was where most of Ray's ideas for Equals 3 show came from. Without the Capitol Hill gangster, there would be no Equals 3 show. Even as Equals 3 went on, Ray continued to use the Capitol Hill Gangsta in the description and hashtags of his show, never forgetting his roots. The show also grew to Ray being a people person and someone active in the early YouTube community who asked for ideas and advice from his viewers. One of the most commonly asked questions he always got was what nationality he was, in which Ray mysteriously left it unanswered. But don't worry, I'll fill you in later in this video. Maybe is something I didn't get to last week. It's the cartoon of the stimulus monkey that appeared in the New York Post. This cartoon. And as you can clearly see, the police have shot the monkey that supposedly wrote the stimulus bill. Now some are calling this cartoon racist, assuming that the dead stimulus monkey represents Barack Obama. But really, the only people who are actually offended by this cartoon are Al Sharpton and a bunch of upper middle class white people who say they have black friends but don't. That is a good point, though. My point is, I think it's counterproductive to call things racist unless it's definitively racist, like this. Hey, it's Aaron. Hello? Asian people suck! What kind of phone is that? It's like a Nokia, like, freaking old, old ass phone. You see, oh, that gosh. was racist. But this cartoon? I don't know. But I do know that it's difficult to have an adult conversation about race when the word racism is thrown around. And I want your opinion on this. Is that cartoon racist? I don't really care for um, Ray William Johnson, honestly. I don't really care for his humor. Or videos, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being judgmental. So how did Ray and I become friends? Well, when I was doing comedic videos on my old channel, 4 Fun 808 I was getting a good amount of attention, and I just became a YouTube partner, and one day I got a notification that Ray William Johnson had subscribed to my channel. At the time of this event, he had about 1,000 subscribers, and he wasn't even a YouTube partner yet. But I decided to check his channel out, and I absolutely loved the Capitol Hill Gangsta show. I mean, it was fresh, it was interesting, and it was funny, and it was just gangsta. It was at this point that Ray and I became really good friends. And we were talking on a daily basis, sharing ideas, venting frustrations, talking about life, philosophy, learning how to grow our channels together. I actually remember helping Ray apply for the YouTube partnership and assisting him in all the steps in setting up the Google AdSense account. And through all the ups and downs, I encouraged Ray to keep growing his brand and keep sticking with it, offering my moral support and friendship whenever I could. Because you may not know this, but Ray faced a lot of hardships early on growing his YouTube channel. From videos getting demonetized, getting flagged, from videos getting hit with copyright claims, from his whole channel getting suspended. And there was even a point where Ray was so frustrated, he actually wrote to YouTube and said, you know what, I am done. I went out of the partnership program. But luckily, this didn't happen as YouTube didn't read or respond to his email. I mean, YouTube not responding to emails? It's funny to see how that hasn't fucking changed after all these years. Anyway, back to the Gangsta Show. Despite its popularity, Ray eventually changed the name of the show in early 2009 from the Capitol Hill Gangsta to Equals 3. And according to Ray, this is what some of the reactions from the fans were. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> nipple. Third, I guess I need to address my decision to change the name of the show. Yeah, now, care. judging from the feedback I got, you guys hate the new name. But I don't you were care pissed. For the some of you thought the new name was more disappointing than when Penelope Cruz won that okay, Oscar. That oh yeah. <laughs> Some of you even threatened to cut one of my nuts off. Wow. Then I'd have to change the logo so to something like this. Off. Some of you wrote me to tell me that you really love the old name. Yeah, well, that's funny because the old name called me last night 
and it doesn't love you. Okay, that's, that's Sorry funny. to break it to you. <laughs> Chlamydia. And some of you were upset because now I can't do the gangsta thing at the end. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll figure out something. But I had to change the name. Lord Milhouse told me to. And rule what number one that? of the Church of Milhouse is you don't question the church of Millhouse. And of course, rule well, number two is so send money anyway. anyway. God, sometimes you guys drive me crazier than that one word troll. Madonna. You act that? like if I don't change the name back, you'll murder me like I'm the stimulus monkey. Now normally this show so evolves based on your feedback, but this time I can't do it. I'm not changing the name back. But give it time, the name will work in favor of the show. Trust me, ass. I don't. So why did Ray William Johnson change the name of his show to Equals 3? For many years this baffled a lot of people and many assumed it was just a random decision. In actuality, it was well calculated as he was planning on changing the format of his show from politics into showing you three videos. Thus, Equals 3. In an interview Ray did with Forbes, he stated, I began to consider why people came to YouTube and arrived at the conclusion that people visit the site for one of two reasons. They're either there to watch viral videos or they're there to watch their favorite video blogger. Using that analysis, I conceived my first formatted show, Equals 3. The idea behind Equals 3 was to combine video blogging and viral videos and place them within a rigid format so that only the actual blogging and viral videos would change each episode. While this answer is definitely true, there is another reason you may not know about the change away from politics, and that reason is because of hate messages and death threats. You see, when someone talks about politics, people are very sensitive, and although most people loved the Capitol Hill gangsta, some just didn't, and even went so far as to constantly send raid death threats because they didn't agree with whatever political jokes or viewpoint he was making. Having these kind of death threats made to a person on a daily basis can really take its toll on anybody, and it's the reason that Ray decided he could no longer continue the Capitol Hill gangsta or talk about politics. And it's a shame, really. Many people, including myself, enjoyed the show, and while the name and format change to Equals 3 in hindsight was a great decision, as it became the most popular show on the internet, some people still remember the gangsta show and want him to bring it back several years later. Ray William Johnson. The one thing that no one knows, though, which I'm one of the few people who probably does, is that before his big thing, Equals 3, he had something called Capitol Hill Gangsta, which the whole thing was actually you know, analyzing issues happening in the days. He did make it funny, especially when it involved Sarah Palin, and it's something that was informative and funny at the same time. And he canceled it because his job had said, we don't want your videos to, sh to mess around with our political views. So he cut those out, and that's how Equals 3 was born. But personally, I think, you know what, it's been a few years, I think that he should bring that back, or at least make a separate page dedicated to those videos. Because, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, as much as I like his stuff, it's getting pretty stale. And incredibly repetitive. So I think it'd be nice and refreshing to actually have informative, satirical, like, good stuff happening. Especially in the political world. You know, I have to agree with the fan in the video. I would love to see Ray William Johnson bring back the Capitol Hill Gangsta. It's a different time now, where we see a lot of political content creators with different viewpoints rise out of the ashes to earn large followings. In fact, you can clearly see that Ray's passion for politics still hasn't died out. If you take a look at the social media accounts, we see your posts, Ray. So come on, bring back the Capitol Hill Gangsta. Give the people what they want. I mean, we could especially use your expertise in today's day and age where some people are so politically fucking divided and can use an independent platformer to bring all viewpoints together through your knowledge and humor. But what do you guys think? Should he bring the show back? Should he run for president? Hashtag Ray Johnson for president. So I did end up meeting Ray William Johnson in person in New York City for the 789 YouTube gathering. And Ray was one of the chillest and most friendliest people I had ever met. He was a great friend who graciously let me stay at his apartment during the entire event. And as a broke college student, I really appreciated that. Thank you, Ray. Love you, bro. I did meet a lot of amazing people just in his apartment as well, such as Mika Kitty, Dan Brown, aka Pogobat, Michelle Fawn, The Will of DC, Live Lava Live, Nana Lou, and Katrific. For some strange reason, 
Ray's apartment was the place in NYC to hang out at. And at the 789 YouTube gathering, I really had the time of my life. I enjoyed hanging out with everybody. And I got to see Ray William Johnson's creativity and his drive firsthand. And the rumors are true. He didn't type anything out when scripting his shows. He literally wrote everything by hand on this yellow notepad of his. It was crazy. And after getting to know Ray in person, I told him a bold prediction. I told him he would rise to the number one guy on YouTube. I saw his writing, his talent, his resolve, and I knew that he had what it would take. And after Ray's rise to success, he nicknamed me the Psychic Vlogger. And looking back all those years ago, in hindsight, my prediction was right. So what did happen to Ray William Johnson, and what is he up to now? Well, in 2014, Ray William Johnson stepped down as host of Equals 3 and tried to replace it with other hosts. Unfortunately, this really didn't work out, as Equals 3 wasn't just a show you could replace with anybody. Ray forgot a piece of his own advice, and that is people go to YouTube to watch their favorite video blogger. And people's favorite video blogger was Ray William Johnson, and the show just didn't work without him. People liked watching him, and not so much this other host who shall not be named. And since stepping down from a show, his YouTube channel just hasn't been the same, and hasn't gotten the same amount of support. And nowadays, he mostly makes random videos on Facebook and on Instagram. And although he seems pretty happy with these niche markets, hopefully, one day, He'll bring back the Capitol Hill Gangsta Show. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this journey through time with me. I can't wait to take you all on more adventures and to share more stories with you guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if there's any person or any topic you want me to do on a future video, please let me know in the comment section below. That's all for today. I'm Aaron of 1A, and I approve this message. I'm Ray William Johnson, and this is Capitol Hill Gangsta. Oh, I almost forgot. You guys want to know what nationality Ray William Johnson is, right? Well, you see, I asked him in person, and I got the exclusive answer for you right here. You see, Ray is... Oh, and the Asian guy who appeared earlier in the video is Aaron, is my friend Aaron from For Fun 808 And he doesn't really need my plug because he has kind of a large following, but even so, go check him out. He's a funny-ass dude. Check out his channel by clicking here.